We'll go back to Nick. Adam. Um, one argument that always comes up from anti-gun people is you don't need a gun, the police will protect you. But what we see in reality is that for 50 minutes, the kids in the classroom in Texas were calling 911, call after call, going through to the police chief and the police chief deciding, hey, it's nobody shooting anybody, regardless of what the kids say on 911, we're not going in until everything is quiet and safe. So please do not protect us. Uh, there is this myth that police jobs are dangerous. If you look at the actual danger statistics, uh, they're in something like 10th place. There are nine or more, more dangerous occupations. And yet the police have this myth that they are going to protect us that they take the danger on themselves. Um, how do you account for the persistence of the Smith, even though all the facts are the other way? Well, because the job is to protect us. So they're not doing their job. And, you know, I, I, I've been critical for the police for a long time. I think they're badly trained, badly motivated. Um, I think, you know, it goes back to they're not even in good shape. So they couldn't protect us even if they tried. Um, they're justifiably afraid because the, the bad guys would beat them up. Um, they, they don't know how to use their guns. Uh, what was the police woman who drew the a gun instead of a taser and she couldn't tell the difference and shot a guy when she meant to taser him? Uh, you know, time and time again, we, we, you know, and I'm sure there are very competent police people out there. And I'm sure there are people who would have rushed into that school. And there have been occasions when police have done that. So I, I, I don't want to extrapolate from this one case to all police because I don't think that's true. But um, the reality is the police in this country, for a variety of cultural reasons, and I don't know if it was different in the past or not. That would be an interesting statistic to look up. Police in this country have been passive. I think part of it is the corruption of the drug war, which has uh, given the gangs so much money and therefore such powerful weapons that police won't challenge them. They'd rather take a bribe then risk their life for what? To stop a shipment of cocaine when another shipment's just going to replace it? What's the point when people want the cocaine? Why should I? So I think the drug war has been, un and I think the war on the mafia uh, during prohibition was the same way. I think it's unbelievably corrupting of police. And, uh, and I, so I think, I think, I think we, we have this myth because we believe that that's the way it should be. That's what they're paid for. They're actually paid to protect us. They're paid to rush into that school and to shoot the bastard, um, not to stop people from doing it, which is what they ultimately did. It was worse than it wasn't they did it. They actually stopped people from doing it. So, uh, you know, I, I, we should fight for a world in which police are better, in which police is a dangerous job, is a risky job, because their job is to intervene. Their job is to protect. What is it? Protect and serve? Isn't that on the badge or something? serve and protect, uh, protect, it's there, right there in the definition. So if, if they're not living up to it, we should fire them all. You know, in, in Georgia, they wanted to get rid of corruption among police in, and uh, judges um, after the fall of the Soviet Union. And they, they were very corrupt. Everything was corrupt. Everything you paid the police off, you paid the judges off, everything, the whole system was corrupt. So they wanted to, they wanted to get rid of corruption. So they fired every single policeman and every single judge. And they started a slow process of rehiring them. And for a while, there were no policemen and no judges. But it was better in the long run to do that and to get a whole new bunch, pay them well, uh, create expectations and get a non-corrupt. And today, Georgia, relatively speaking, is not very corrupt relative to how it was and relative to other Eastern European countries. Um, so yeah, fire all of them. And certainly in this police force, they should all be fired and, and change the expectation and maybe change the pay and change the way they're treated and change the way we approach this. And, you know, but one of the problems is if every time policemen shoot somebody, 
we assume that they're the bad guys, then they're going to be reluctant to shoot somebody. So it's, um, it's very frustrating. And yes, if there's no police, this is the point about gun control. If there's no police, then we live in a state of anarchy. And God, am I going to be armed if we live in a state of anarchy? I'm buying a couple of shotguns. I'm buying an AR-15. I'm getting a couple of pistols. Uh, I'm going to be ready for anything if I cannot count on the police. If, if I'm convinced of that, then I better be as armed as, as, as the bad guys are. Uh, and by the way, the best weapon for self-defense, not for school shooting, but for self-defense, is a shotgun. If you want to protect your home, buy a shotgun. It's a scary weapon. Anybody looking down the muzzle of a shotgun will run. And you don't have to aim. And uh, this is another thing you learn when you, uh, when you fire guns, is your aim is going to be pretty pathetic when you're in a stressful situation. Your aim is pretty good in a firing range, maybe. Mine's not that great even in a firing range. In a stressful situation, it's going to be terrible. So buy a gun where it doesn't matter how good your aim is, the bad guy's going to die no matter what. That's a shotgun. Uh, for school shooting, you need a handgun or you need a, you need a rifle. You need to be, because you, you don't want, you don't want to spay the bullets. Uh, you know, one of my worries about arming teachers and arming janitors and things like that is just to make sure they're well trained and that they will shoot the bad guy and they won't shoot others. But I, I don't, I don't have a problem with that as a solution. If you run all the back, uh, 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 you know, uh, background checks possible. If you, um, if you force them to go through mental health screening, if they go through mental health screening, let's say once a year, so that you don't get one of these people who are carrying a gun into a school going nuts and, and using it. So, but there are ways in which to arm teachers or janitors and, and have security guards there. It's not a pleasant environment to, to be in where the school has to have a guard. So I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly happy about that, but we might be in a stage where, as Adam said, you can't trust the police. You better, you better arm somebody else. You better have somebody else armed at schools that can take care of the bad guys. In Israel, for a very long time, even though there were terrorist attacks against schools, we did not have anybody armed at the schools. Um, and at some point in, I think, 2000, they started having guards at schools. Um, and, and nobody likes it. It's not, a, it's not a good thing or pleasant thing. If you can get, if you can get by without it, it's better. Turning a school into a fort is, is giving up, giving up on civilization. It's giving up on education. So uh, how, about we, um, how about we fix our kids so that they don't do these crazy things? Um, I mean, because you saw not just in school. Schools is just one element of it. But you saw what happened in, uh, in Buffalo. I mean, these, these things are happening. And, it's, it's, and, and look at the gang warfare in Chicago. More people die on any given weekend in Chicago than died in that school because of gun, and, you know, uh, gangs shooting each other. So there's a much bigger problem here of violence in our society. Somebody said, somebody said about guns the other day, they said a, uh, a, a, a armed society is a less violent society. It doesn't make any sense to me because America is a relatively violent society on the world scale relative to Europe, let's say, and Europe has a lot less guns than America. So it's something in the culture. It's not about whether they, you have guns or don't have guns. I mean, in, in England, for a very long time, the police didn't have guns. They still, most police don't have guns. They've changed their state. They've changed that only because of terrorism, not because of crime, but uh, because there's no gun crime in, in, in the UK. So the police don't have, have guns. So, um, and, and a lot less homicides per capita. So it's not, the relation between guns and the, the, the reasons for violent crime are very complex. And it's not a violence, a, a, a well-armed society is not violent or yes, violent. The correlation breaks down. Terrorism is not exactly crime. Terrorism is, is politically motivated versus crime, which is other motivated. So terrorism is not crime. Those are two different things, different categories. Uh, even if you include terrorism, by the way, uh, the UK is a less violent society than the US. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks show. If you'd like to support the show, 
we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.